Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Soul Rose Show. This is a podcast where ancient feminine wisdom meets the modern path of soul evolution. I'm Cherie Burton, your host, and today we're going to dive into five beautiful truths to live by. I am so grateful for every one of you who tune into this show. I want to thank SM Lanny or 21 who left a wonderful review on Apple Podcasts and all three of her sentences end with an exclamation point. I'm just going to read them to you. She said, each episode has been well worth the time. I walk away with something to contemplate, something that resonates and something that is nourishing to my heart. Thank you so much for the valuable conversations you're sharing with us all. Thank you so much. And you've encapsulated my goal and intention, which is to give you not only inspiration, those of you who listen, but also practical, tangible tools that you can implement in your life to further your growth, healing, and expansion. Today, we're going into growth, healing, and expansion as we highlight five beautiful truths to live by. You're going to love this episode. My guest is my friend, Julie Scott. She's an immersive meditation coach and certified hypnotherapist. What she does is she helps people transform by guiding them into full relaxation so they can access their subconscious and get to the core beliefs that might be holding them back. I've known Julie for years. She was actually a guest on the show years ago. She's really deepened into her work and I was able to experience a meditation session with her recently and had some big breakthroughs on my own. And you will want to join our Facebook community, Soul Rose Community, because this Monday on the big solar eclipse, those of you who are into like planetary alignment, astrological, you know, movement in the heavens and earth, this is a powerful portal. And she's going live with us in the group on that day, this coming Monday the 8th at 11 a.m. Mountain. She's going to take someone in our community through an immersive meditation session. So to be part of that and to also get my free whole body healing mini course, just ask to join our private Facebook group, Soul Rose Community, and you'll have access to all of that yumminess. Now, here we go into five beautiful truths to live by. Julie, I love that we've reconnected. I mean, you were on my podcast years ago. I was. I don't even remember what we talked about. I'm sure it was epic, <laughs> but I love that we reconnected. And get to spend this time together. So it's like we've both had this deepening into spirituality, really. Yes. And I know that you part of the emphasis that you've had is is helping maturing women move into a new space in their life where they they don't have to be limited by I guess you could say cultural constraints or societal norms or whatever. Like you can reinvent yourself at any time. Yes. So I want us to dive into, because as of late, and I got to experience one of your meditation sessions last week, which was really beautiful. A lot came through and I, I know you're going to be coming live in our group to do yes, I'm excited. T- meditation or a meditation session with our lucky volunteer. But why don't you share just a little bit about why this new meditative path found you, what it means to you. Sometimes when, I, when we talk about meditation, people freak part of it is our old programming of we're getting it wrong. We're not doing it right. And we get in the mind and different things. Mm -hmm. But I think your style is really doable and powerful in terms of the guided meditation aspect of it. But I know you do your own meditation in your own state of silence or what have you. So why don't you bring us to why that came for you as kind of a non-negotiable in your life? You've had this string of (laughs) how many days since November of what, 2021? You really haven't stopped. 11, 11, 21 is when Mm. I put a stake in the sand and I'm like 11, 11. I'm doing this every day because I noticed, because I was sporadic before that. And I just noticed that the days that I did meditate were always my better days, my good Mm. days, my days where I felt more hopeful and optimistic and things just came to me more effortlessly. So I was like, maybe I should connect the dots there. (laughs) Maybe it's the meditation. So and not just washing my hair. But anyway, I, (laughs) yeah, I started in November 11th being consistent with it, but really my meditation journey started before that in 2019, just after I was, had written a good chunk of my book that I wrote. And woke up the next morning after sending out chunks for testimonials with this lower back pain that was so excruciating. I had to put my elbows in the sink (laughs) to wash my face or brush my teeth. Six months of suffering led me to reading some books that I had never come across before. One of them being Becoming Supernatural, Dr. Joe Dispenza, and You Are the Placebo. And then I started doing his meditations and breathing techniques. They scare me. Can I just say, well, my husband and I went to his advanced meditation thing in Cancun. I remember you telling him. It's like someone yelling at you while you're trying. I mean, I love him and his style is just very unique. It is very unique. I mean, for me though, I used his meditations. I had bought some CDs of his back when CDs were the thing you'd buy. And I did his meditations for two weeks, every day for two weeks. And I healed my back. So that was like... 
whoa. <laughs> so that took me into a completely different area of study and curiosity and, you know, just wanting to learn all I could about the brain and the body and how our subconscious works and beliefs and blah, blah, blah. And the reason why I started meditating on 11, 11, 21 is because I knew I was going to one of his retreats in January of 2022. So, um, and I had only really meditated maybe 17 minutes total. And and honestly, when I first started meditating, even long before I did his meditations, I would use insight timer, which has a little timer. And I would, yeah. I would be meditating. I, I'd set it for five minutes and I'd be like a minute in and I'm like looking at the timer. <laughs> so trust me, I know, I know it's not something you just I get that. I totally flip get that. a switch and you do it. But anyways, that's kind of what led me to it was that whole experience and just recognizing that I felt better the days that I did it. And I wanted to just be prepared to be able to fully experience that um, very expensive retreat I went to in, in January of 2022. But it was very, very, very powerful and to witness, you know, the various yeah. healings, especially of people there were was, you know, absolutely life changing. So yeah, if any of you ever get the chance to go to one of Joe Dispenza's live meditation retreats, or I don't know what they even, they're even called now. Advanced retreats. Yeah. Advanced retreats. Yeah. It's truly, well, because there's so many people there. Yeah, I think that's part there's of it. Energy. Yeah. The intention of the people. Mm. It sounds like a revival, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. like, but it's also done very well. And because he is in more of that masculine, obviously, the, the more the masculine projected energy, it works really well for some people. It's very commanding. It's also very gentle too, mm -hmm. but yeah, my husband and I went to that and we did witness some spontaneous healings. We could feel when we were in those settings, we could feel energy. We, yes. you know, and you're getting up at 4 a.m. and walking on the beach yeah. and doing a walking meditation and your whole body's tingling. And yeah, it was cool. So you went through that in January of 2022. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that was really powerful. And then just to continue on at the end of 2022, my life just was thrown upside down because I lost my sister, Kim. Mm. Total, complete shock, surprise. And that really was one of the things that set me off into seeking deeper roots in my spirituality, because that really something traumatic like that, it either, you either go down from that or you go up. And I was like, I know that this is something that I can grow from and all that I knew, all that I had learned for, through all the years, it's like, I'm going to take all my tools, everything that I know, everything I've read, and I'm just going to go even deeper. And mm -hmm. it was, it really was, it's what has brought me to where I am today. The unshakable foundation that I stand on now is because of that. And I'm thankful for it now. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry about your sister. I know you and I have talked about this before. You know that I've also lost a sister. I've had space around it. It'll be 19 years. Mm -hmm this month. Yeah. But there isn't any pain like that, especially when it's unexpected. Ugh. So when you said it put you in a space where you're standing now on this unshakable ground, I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase, the divine ground mm. or the divine ground of your being, but that's what it reminded me I of when you that. said that. I write that down, divine ground. So what is that? How would you describe that in your embodied state? What does that mean? And how does it feel and how do you move from that place okay. in the world? <laughs> Frankly, I don't know how I ever moved from a different place. <laughs> I mean, that's how, that's how incredible the feeling is. It's a deep faith in something more powerful than me. It's a deep faith that I am connected to that power all the time. It's a deep faith that there's nothing that I can't do. Mm. It's a deep faith that I am completely held and supported and loved unconditionally, no matter what. And I cannot screw it up ever. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's just big. like, ah, that's big. so, it's so just... I know your history a little bit. Why don't you share with the listeners why that means so much to you now? Like, as opposed to maybe some opposite states you were in prior, you say now that you like know you're connected to the source of all that, you know, you can't mess it up, that you can't get it wrong, which is a huge, that's a deep, deep programming well, just, for a lot of us is that we're getting it wrong, especially in the spirituality department. Yeah, 100%. I mean, my religious background yeah. is what I needed to undo. And I thought I had undone it five or seven years ago. I thought Which I had part done did all. did you feel like you had? And what was your religion of origin? Just because I'm kind of like obsessed with talking about this with different people. Because it's, I've noticed it in almost every single guest. It doesn't matter if they regularly attended church or if they popped in and out or whatever. It doesn't even matter what their religion was. 
I'm noticing some very yeah, universal was... underpinnings to this. Oh, and it makes sense because we are spiritual beings having a human yeah. experience. I mean, that's why it's so powerful for all of us, I believe. But I was brought up in a Christian home, Baptist, very strict. And, you know, just the, I remember as a young girl, very young, loving going to church and enjoying the idea that, you know, Jesus loves me, this I know for okay. the Bible tells me so, right? I mean, all the things mm -hmm. that I was taught made me feel safe and loved and secure. And it was wonderful. But then, of course, I grew up and became a teenager. And then I was trying to figure out my sexuality and, you know, puberty hits and, you know, all these different desires come over you and you don't know, you're trying to figure out who you are. And then you've got, then it turns into, well, you need to be a good girl. All the, the dogma comes in, all the, you know, you, God is watching you. He's judging you. You know, you're going to go to hell if you do, you know, the X, Y, and Z. And I just remember when I was about 12, saying to my dad, who was a deacon in the church, so he's like a notch below the preacher, right? I said, you know, daddy, I go, I really don't know that all the people that believe in Allah and Buddha and whoever are wrong. And that because we believe in Jesus, that we're right. I think that maybe what connects us all is that we all have a faith in something that we can't see. And maybe Jesus and Buddha and Allah are all the same. And that's what connects us all. And I thought that was brilliant for a 12 year old to come up with that. I mean, yeah, thinking totally. about it now, I still think, wow, pretty yeah. epic, <laughs> foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but my dad grabbed a Bible and went about to prove mm. me wrong. And I just clicked off. And I was like, you know, if you're not going to tell me that God's a loving God, that just doesn't work for me. And I just went through the motions until I moved out at 18. And then I never darkened the doorway of a church again, unless it was for a wedding. Mm. And, and it wasn't until my late forties that I was like, I mean, everything in my life felt like it was coming together, but I still felt adrift. I'm like, what is missing? What is it? What is it? And I just remember thinking it was the look that I saw on my parents' face, believe it or not, after they would pray and they would turn something over to God, that peace mm -hmm. that I would see on their face, you know, however they got there, I just wanted that. Yeah. I wanted And that. you associated like, it. How do I get Sometimes we can associate that with a belief structure yeah. instead of this is a natural response to actually having a spiritual connection of any kind is handing yes. it over, right? Mm -hmm. yes. But because we've made these associations, because it's all we had foundationally, mm -hmm. move forward with that. Because I love it because <laughs> I'll say this, sometimes there's a naivety almost when you're in a really, really solid belief structure that you almost have blinders on and you can't see anything else. Oh, 1000%. And I, I have a whole different view on beliefs than I used to because they can be so malleable. And this is where dogma comes in. Dogma comes in when they're, they stop being malleable. And it's like, nope, this is it. And it's black and white. And if you don't do this, this happens. Jesus didn't teach that way. No. If you if you really read mm -hmm. the New Testament, which is all we really have of like his, obviously the teachings of his life, followers experiences with him, which, which I found out later, were not actually even written until a whole generation after his death. Mm -hmm. But he taught in parables. Anytime somebody came up to him, he didn't give him a straight answer ever. It was always reflecting mm -hmm. like, what do you think? And what do you say? Yeah. And I'm going to draw in the sand for a minute while you guys duke it out, all you religious hierarchy people. Well, I take this woman yeah. who's being thrown in the circle, you know, like in adultery yeah. or whatever. So that was an epiphany for me is there's so much paradox that is about oh, life. Yeah. And so to make these unequivocal beliefs of black and white and this and that is, I believe now very blasphemous when it comes to our spirits, our individual souls. Yeah. And when you think about the Bible, I mean, now that I know what I know and the, what I've read and what I've researched and what I've studied, the Bible really was in a lot of ways, the first self-help book. Mm -hmm. And it, it's again, just how it was interpreted, just like how we interpret life through our belief goggles, right? I mean, it's like how anything is interpreted, the meaning we assign to it is going to either turn it into something that controls and generates fear or opens people up and frees them, right? So I see it now as the latter. It opens you up and it frees you. And that's through, you know, just understanding 
what, how it was misinterpreted. I mean, and let's face it, religion is a huge form of control. I'm not knocking religion 100% because some people do really find solace in it. And that's great. Whatever works for you, do it. But it's like, my whole thing is, is like Jesus bought love. That's That's it, right? Pretty much it. Like, why (laughs) why are we complicating it? it? Yeah. I mean, love is really all there is. It is the way, the truth and the life. It's love. So when you saw that look come over your parents in your late forties of like the peace when they just handed it over, which there's a fine line, let's just be honest, of bypassing uncomfortable things and handing them over, which I see a lot of very devout religious people doing because they just want to feel good all the time. They don't want to feel that uncomfortability because it means Satan has just breached their, you know, existence. But when you, you know, being in your late forties and on the path you were on, you knew that you weren't ready to bypass. You knew that it was time for Mm -hmm. you to learn that, to get that spiritual peace for yourself. Yeah. I wanted the real deal. I had lived decades of pretending as a people pleaser. (laughs) So I was done being, you know, doing what the good girl would do. Not that I went to the the, uh, polar opposite, but it's like, what do I think, what do I want? What's my feeling about this? I don't want someone else telling me how I feel about something anymore. I want to decide for myself. And I think that that's the freedom that I have found in the practice of going within, because I don't, I no longer look for answers from anything out here, because this to me is just an illusion, frankly. I mean, it's just whatever I decide it is, right? I mean, and as I change my mind about things, things I see change, right? So me going in for my truth and, and connecting with that part of me that has all the real answers. That's, it's just like a giant blade that just cuts through all the BS. It's like, oh, yeah. I get it now. Mm. And I think that so often we ignore that knowing that we all have, we all have it. It's not like I'm special. No, it's just that you found a we way to access it. it and you've come to peace with it. You yeah. can claim it, which in and yes. of itself is a massive battle in the mind and heart. It's almost like the heart's like, mm, you're good. You're loved. You're whole, you're peace, you know, but your mind's like, but then you didn't do that. And then you're doing this. I want us to go straight into your top fives. <laughs> Because they're so good. And I know you're a student, of course, in miracles, as am I. And now that was kind of your catalyst for for finding this for yourself. Yes. But why don't you explain to our listeners and watchers how you came up with these for your credos for yourself? Yeah, I have been studying for 300 and eight days, 309 days. Just gonna pull out the little workbook because it's so small and cute and I love it. And it's been my absolute rock just so that they can see it. It's a course in miracles. Ooh, and you know what? Workbook. That little star they have on there, that's totally my branding compass and everything. So I love oh, it. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So, and it's a workbook for students, manual for teachers, pocket edition, and anyone is a teacher. I mean, anyone and everyone is a teacher and can be a teacher. So I have been going through this for 307 days and it's been the most epic wow. work I've ever gone through. And I will go through it again because it is that Do good. you read is- and study a course? before you meditate or after are you do you do them at different times no i i have a morning routine so i i will come into my office and i will read the daily lesson and then i meditate okay. i try and take the lesson in what else is there for me to learn through mm-hmm. it or you know, to see deeper into it but yeah so going through that and i started that just a few months after my sister passed away and i guess it was in march or april about a year now and yeah, it really has blown my mind. It has changed so many things for me. So I, I have written down my five new truths and I have them on my desk all the time. Yeah, so let's dive in. <laughs> These are good. Number one, whew, I am not my body. And I know people hear this and you know, you probably heard this, but if you really get your head around that and recognize that this is literally just your vessel for life, that it's just a tool for you to experience life through it frees you up in so many ways. And just to clarify, it's like you are the awareness or the consciousness that's animating this meat suit, yeah. I like to call it, right? That's the what my husband calls all in. the time. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> meat suit is good. <laughs> Me. Because it does kind of show you like we're just a bag of bones and tissue and blood, but it's not, it's not us. Yeah. It's just a servant really for us. At the same time, it. yes. And at the same time to be embodied to like, if we didn't have a body, you know, in this, like now, you know, 2024, whatever, 
there wouldn't be as much power to transform our consciousness yeah. without it. So even though we're exactly. not it, it's just that vehicle helps our soul expand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a beautiful thing. Again, I mentioned before we started recording, there's so many things that I even can't even articulate because it's just so yeah. juicy. So because I'm not my body, I'll never know death. Mm -hmm. My body will die, but I will not know death because my awareness cannot die or my energy or my consciousness or my spirit or my soul, whatever you want to call it, whatever relates to you cannot die. I'll never know death. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you can't be damned to everlasting stone fire. Exactly. And it's kind of ridiculous no. now when you think about that. Everlasting mm -hmm. torment. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, I don't believe in hell. No, but a lot either. of people say hell is a metaphor for a state of your mind. And I say right of now course. we're in hell. This is hell. We're in a realm that is vibing at a really low consciousness. It's a huge spectrum. There's a lot of people waking up. There's a lot of light and whatever. But the polarity, I love the idea of claiming everlasting life without an authority figure telling you if you're worthy to have it. I mean, we all are. I mean, we all are just by our divine right. I mean, because we are children of the creator, we are. We are that. Everlasting. Because we are it. <laughs> so we're just a slice of the creator, right? And you're just a piece of that. Yeah. So if you're, if you're a drop in the ocean, a drop doesn't cease to be the right. ocean. It still it's has still the, the whole ocean. ocean in that drop. Yeah, I love exactly. that metaphor. Right. So I really love so that. So there's no, so you'll never know death. Is that the second one? That's okay. the second one. The third one, there is nothing to fear then, right? Because death is the ultimate fear, mm. right? We're all afraid of dying. So if you're, if you can't die, then there's really nothing to fear. Everything else in between is just so details, right? I, I have talked to a couple of people who are like in this deep existential place, which I have been mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. it's like, okay, if my consciousness goes on and I can't die, I will still never have this form again. I'll still never play this role again. And so there's some reticence around releasing our roles, the relationships we've made and the, you know, the places we've served. How would you speak to that in terms of like the death and the fear of like people who were like, well, why deductive reasoning? So like, okay, so if there's no death, how does that automatically mean there's no fear? When, when things well, have I mean, what to it, kind of die, like certain things have to die. Not that we will. Do you know where I'm going with this? I do. But I mean, I think just to clarify, I think that one of the biggest fears that people have in general is the death of the body, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? The death of the body. And so from that standpoint, it's like, yes, we can witness, like I witnessed or I feel the loss of my sister Kim's body, right? Right. Her physical, the touch of her hand, the, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. But it's another, and because of losing her, it's like, I literally every day in my meditation, I am with her. I mean, like it is so real. She is there. Mm -hmm. I can hear her voice. I can hear her laughter. I can feel the touch of her hands. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, she is there. And so therefore I know that she is not. That's dead. a beautiful gift. I mean, her body yeah. is not here. And that's what it's, right? that's her, body what her death has taught you, right? As you deepen into this understanding. Yes. Yeah. Huge. Like, I don't think I would be here without mm. that. I'm sure of it, honestly. Mm. But did I answer the question? Yeah, no, that's great. You and I had talked before about how there's nothing to fear, but you and I had this deep fear of the dark well into our adulthood. Yes. <laughs> and let's talk about yes. what that's about. I mean, I have some awareness around yeah. what that is for me, but. Yeah, I don't, I haven't actually figured out what the source of that was, but I did share with you that I, Certain things that I used to be afraid of doing, I'm not anymore, like walking outside at night. I'm not afraid anymore. Getting into bed, standing by my bed, turning my bed down, turning on my meditation music, still standing next to my bed, turning the light off, and then getting into bed. Like that never happened. <laughs> I was always like diving into yeah. the bed and then turning the light off because I had this fear of either something under my bed or just something in the dark that... If I was under the covers, I mean, if I were under the covers, I was safe. I mean, all these fears from my childhood. Yeah, totally. I was afraid of something under the bed as well. I think a lot of kids are. But even when I kneeled down to pray well into my adulthood, thought of, and some of it was like, 
some old religious programming around like Satan doesn't want you to pray. And so what if an evil spirit came and like thwarted this and just so many crazy, like <laughs> irrational fears. But at the same right. time, you know, I have, we have to look at that fear, right? Like what yeah. was that really about? Hey everybody, pardon the interruption, but I'm so excited to tell you about the new mind, body, soul membership that I'm launching alongside the podcast relaunch. You know, my research and career has focused on gut psychology, emotional healing, mind, body science, and how to heal from the inside out through your whole body, through your miraculous multi-sensory pathways and accessing these sensory pathways is how you heal. So starting April 1st, we're going to dive into this monthly membership where I'm going to give soul-based monthly mental health hacks on the road to emotional mastery. You're going to get a journal. You're going to get a mindfulness mini class every month, guided meditation, anchoring and enlightenment practices, online group coaching, and lots more. And it's super affordable, $12 a month or $100 a year. So just go to shereeburton.com forward slash mind body dash membership. That's shereeburton.com forward slash mind body dash membership. I don't know. I mean, I, I think, you know, I watched a lot of you know, scary movies as a kid. And, you know, I lived in the country. So there was a lot of, I mean, I had to put our dog in our barn at night and my sister would watch me from the back porch and I would run to the barn. <laughs> I would beat the dog to the barn and then run back to the house. It's, you know, speed of light <laughs> just so that I wouldn't be in the dark for any amount of time. And I wouldn't do it without her watching, yeah. you know? But I mean, I don't know where that, I don't really I know. This is probably just the fear, fear of but the it's unknown and not being able to see. The unknown. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But I, I feel so wow, like that's just been lifted mm -hmm. and it wasn't even something I was really conscious of until I just found myself doing things like laying on my back with no sheet. Cause I live in Palm Springs, the California. Desert. So it's hot here a lot laying on my bed without a sheet or anything on laying on my bed. And I always had to have my hands somewhere on my chest or my mm -hmm. belly or a sheet over me or something. And now I can just lay there with my arms out to the side. You don't need that security blanket but because you are the security blanket. You are protected. Yes. I'm safe, supported, and always held mm -hmm. in love. And I even go as far as to imagine traveling through life in my heart. Because when I'm traveling through life through, and that to me is mm -hmm. love, I am basically bulletproof. I mean, I'm just surrounded by love mm -hmm. always. And that is a... That's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, that, that is. really is a, that's a feeling that you just, I mean, I just. I think too, the opposite oof. of fear is love, right? And so we yes. haven't felt worthy of love. So we had to stay in fear. We had to stay in a fear-based state to access love. That's the gift. What I study with like the gene keys and different things. It's like, you can't access the gift of something unless you sit in the shadow. We weren't taught that. We were taught yeah, that no. if we were in a shadow state or let's just say in the dark, that literally we could be taken captive by the evil forces and yeah. that we didn't have power over that. We felt powerless. Yeah. I've done so much deconstruction around this. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, anyway, so, so number one, you're not your body. Number two, you'll never know death. Number three, because, because mm -hmm. that there's nothing to fear is your love. Right. So what is the, what is the fourth one? My thoughts alone cause my pain. Mm. This is a big one too. Yeah. Any pain, whether it's fear, guilt, shame, physical pain. That's why anesthesia works. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts alone cause all pain. I mean, I shared the story about walking along the beach and I had cut my foot on a piece of glass or something. I don't even know what cut my foot, but I was walking along the beach for probably two miles, talking to a good friend of mine, just chatty, chatty. And then we sat down for a minute and we crossed our, you know, sat down and crossed my legs. And I was just, as we were talking, just brushing the sand off of my foot. And then I see this on my left foot, it's like, oh, it's a lot of sand. It's not coming off. And I kind of had to dig it off. And then I saw blood and then I felt mm. pain. And I was like, it didn't hurt till you saw the blood. <laughs> right. I mean, and there's countless studies of people who can walk across hot coals and not get burned or when they're hypnotized, get burned by a, a pencil eraser that's then they're told it's a lit cigarette and vice versa. Yeah. It's also like that placebo effect as well. 100%. So yeah, we walked, yeah. my, my husband and our three oldest kids, we walked across the hot coals at a Tony Robbins thing. And it was so funny. Oh, we wow. were all in the same line and only my daughter felt the holes. She's like, what am I doing wrong? Did it? I'm like, it's not wrong, but mm -hmm. she was the only one who got any kind of burns or blisters or anything like that. It was really, really, really interesting. 
Huh. Anyway, interesting. Yeah. So I believe that as well. Like when you really want to get to your soul, that place in your soul, it's not thought based, right? It's more experiential, but yet it can still uh-huh. speak to you, like your soul voice, obviously. Yeah. How, what's, yeah. What's your gauge? How do you know, like, oh, this is a truth coming in or this is not <laughs> true? Well, honestly, it's if it feels good, I know it's coming from the soul. It's coming from my inner self. It's coming from the divine. But how do you know if you're not pacifying? I'm just going to dig a little deep with this because okay. like sometimes people feel good, but they're believing in untruth. Like they've associated, go back to What's the belief an untruth? or a dogma, let's just say, and believing that dogma makes them feel good. So they believe it's true. Well, I mean, there's obviously your beliefs are how you see everything and how you experience everything. So For me, my goal when I go inside is really just to get my body out of the way, right? To just really just relax the body to the point where I almost can't feel it. Mm. Because I believe that my body can be running me. And when my body is running me, that's when I get into fear because that my body is essentially in the past, right? It's showing me what you know, whatever health issues I have, or if I'm radiant or whatever, it's like, it's, it takes a while for our bodies to catch up with what's been going on Mm -hmm. in our minds. Right. So if I can get my body out of the way, then I'm able to access that place. And, and it's like, you're right. It's not thought, but it's when I'm in that completely relaxed place. And then I realize I'm not thinking about anything. And then it's like the next thing that comes in, Mm. that's it. So it's like messaging. It's like soul messaging more than like a concrete. Well, it's different for everyone. Some people have a vision. Some people hear a voice and it's typically their own voice because I am that I am, right? I mean, (laughs) the voice you hear is yours, Right. right? And, or they get a feeling, right? Or just something comes over them and they go, Oh, I know. It's like a new knowing, a new understanding. For me, it's often around something that I have been out here thinking yeah. about, thinking about, and then thinking all of a sudden about, you have that moment like, of clarity of like, Ooh, yeah. Cause that's what this does for me. It gets me focused and it's not about not thinking it's about thinking clearly. And that's what most people lack is that clarity of mind. And once you're clear on what it is that you truly want and what the next best step is for you, then you go about doing that with confidence that you just wouldn't otherwise. It's a combination of shifting subconscious beliefs, connecting with the divine and creating the life that you truly desire for the first time without feeling like you don't deserve it or that you're feeling guilty for wanting it. Yeah. That's how, you know, the divine is not speaking to you. If you're feeling guilt or limitation, if it doesn't feel good, unworthiness of any kind, it's not coming from the right source. It's your mental programming. And, And it's in the collective. We all hold that collective thought processes that we have to just repattern. Yeah, It's in the collective. We're all swimming in the same water to some degree. It's true. <laughs> but I love this. Okay. So after you're like, okay, I know now that I can listen to my own thoughts, that they're aligned. I know when it comes in and that it's a truth for me. And then what is your uh, I, fifth one? I just want to say to follow up to that. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I choose what thoughts I repeat Oh, because I'm that kind of powerful. Mm. And so are you. And that reminds me of mantras too. Yeah. yeah. I choose what kind yeah, of thoughts I repeat. Okay. So then the, the fifth one is the humdinger. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for this one. I know what it is already. Spoiler alert. No, I'm not going to say it. You go ahead. <laughs> Number five, I've come to believe and to know that there really is no sin. And it's just wrong thinking and wrong meaning that's been assigned to ourselves. And this comes from the formative years from zero to seven years old, when we receive our original core programming as babies, right? And so for that reason, I can look on myself as innocent, right? Mm -hmm. And, and I can also look on everyone as innocent because I recognize that all of us were once babies 
And even the most hardened criminal, I can have compassion for him or her, knowing that they just assign some meaning to themselves, the world around them, based on their experiences that just weren't correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it just is, and, and to me, it's like, this is what we need in the world is compassion and understanding that we all have the same experience, right? We all have the same experience where something happens to us when we're a kid and we have to decide something with our limited experiences and lack of reasoning and egocentric yeah. way of looking at the world. Right. Like everything. Our is, brains weren't even fully formed right. when we were, like, like you said, those formative years, it's like, we're a sponge. Exactly. And so we're like, okay, I guess that's my new right. credo. Right. Like, and this idea that there is no sin came directly from a course in miracles because I've read many, many times. It's like, God doesn't forgive because he never condemns. And our yeah. job here is to forgive ourselves. That ourselves. is what salvation actually is. That's mm. what the atonement is. is. Atonement. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's, I was telling you this earlier that there's actually a phrase in the gospel of Mary, which is the, for those listeners who aren't familiar, you know, that I'm, well, those who are familiar know I'm absolutely obsessed with Mary Magdalene. Well, it's not like obsession level anymore, really, because it served its purpose <laughs> for where she was taking me. <laughs> but in the gospel of Mary, in this ancient text, there's a phrase that where Jesus literally says there is no sin and he follows it up with more, mm -hmm. but just that, that phrase rocks people. Yes. And it's like, he said, it's coming from Jesus in the gospel of Mary, yeah. the savior said there is no sin. Yeah. And then he goes on to talk about adultery in the sense of how it hurts, but it's like you said, the meaning that we assign to acts to words, yeah. to language. It's sin is, and I've heard this in different contexts that it just means missing the mark. Yes. I love it that. doesn't even have anything to do with you. It's that you were shooting for a certain target and you were just a little bit off that target. Mm -hmm. You missed that mark, but the mark is love. Mm -hmm. This is what I've come to, know, to realize. I was actually ashamed when I was a missionary mm -hmm. for the LDS church. I was uh, in this big meeting with all the other missionaries and girls were in a vast minority. So, but I was the one that was just raising her hand and asking all these questions. And my mission president, bless his soul. He said, he turned to me because I asked a question he couldn't answer. Mm. And he said, sister Lynch, that was my name back then. You're missing the mark. You're looking beyond. No, he said, you're looking beyond the mark. And this is in front of everyone. And then he took me to a scripture where it talked about looking beyond the mark. And that shut my voice down mm. with spiritual inquiry. That was when I was 22 years old for a long time, even though I still couldn't help it. And I would ask a ton of questions, but then I thought it and reflected on it. That's a massive gift he gave me because I had to really sit with that. Am I looking beyond the mark my whole life? Mm. Am I? Until I finally understood that the mark is Christ energy. It is love. Mm. So that's all I want. And for my life, is that mark, Yeah, you know? And so I, I have since healed that, that to, to be curious is not bad. No. It's the portal, the inquiry process that we talked about with Christ asking with parables and things that it's actually like our birthright Yeah, to ask and want and whatever, just looking at children and how they orient that. But that, like I said, it was really painful to sit with that. Am I that person that looks beyond the mark? What's wrong? with me. Like I'm in headed into some really dangerous territory. I better shut it down. You know, Yeah. I have always wanted more Yeah. and I've always shamed myself for wanting more because what I really wanted was the mark. Yeah. I wanted the love. I wanted the connection, everything that we've been talking about. Mm. Oh, wow. No surprise that you're doing what you're doing. Well, yeah, <laughs> I have so much compassion for people who are sitting in the space of feeling like they're getting it spiritually wrong. Yeah. I hear you. Uh, th there's no worse feeling, in my opinion, mm -hmm. than not feeling like you're doing it right for God. Right. You're getting it wrong. You're always sinning. You're always weak. You're always wrong. You're yeah. always bad. You're broken. Like that energy is being lifted from our planet right now. Yeah. And it's tentacles are so deep generationally. Yeah. I'm doing the work on my end to 
unhook those because it's just it's it is massive. I am so I I know now in every fiber of my being that I am here to feel good all the time. I'm here to feel good, whatever Which that looks like. Feel God all the time, right? Just to feel feel love, to just enjoy life, right? The mm-hmm. suffering is optional. I mean, it really is. I mean, and I, I know now when I'm starting to go down that path of not feeling good about something, whether I'm sitting in traffic or, you know, whatever life throws at me, it's like, yeah. if I don't feel good, I'm like, wait, what am I thinking? Because I know mm-hmm. it's from my thoughts. I'm feeling pain. It's coming from what I'm thinking. Stop thinking that. That's Think- such a great awareness. It's like, like oh my God, I don't want to feel like awareness it. practice. Like to just be like, oh, I'm not feeling so good about myself right now. And I feel this pit. In my- this is how it shows up for me. Mm-hmm. I feel like kind of like a pit in my solar plex area. And I'm like, what is this about? Huh. It shows up in different places of my body, the, the tension. But yeah, I love what you're sharing that you know it's about your thoughts. And sometimes they're so subliminal. Like they don't even have a form that it's just like a intimation of like, you're bad, you're getting it wrong. You're, you know, here you go again, doing yeah. it wrong. And no wonder you feel so crappy because you're not doing it right. right. You know, it's that loop. And, and it just, it sneaks in and just the littlest places, like I'll be, you know, I get out of the shower, I'll be putting product in my hair and I wash my hair like every three or four days, you know, a lot of hair is coming out in my, yeah, great my hair. Oh, thank you. And my mind, my <laughs> mind starts going, oh, you're losing a lot of hair. That's a lot of hair. Wow. That's a lot of hair that's coming from <laughs> What does that even mean? It's like, I haven't washed my hair in four days. Must we do something it's... bad because you're losing hair. Like it's so funny. We always personalize. That's the go-to, right? Yeah. We personalize that we've done something wrong because this effect and this thing, this result is happening. Or, or even like where I put my underpants on, I have a full length mirror next to me. And it's like in these old, just old programs that run through me, right? And I'm putting my underpants on and I see myself in that old story. Oh, look at the, oh, you know, criticizing totally. and I'm like and I'm like no you're beautiful mm. and I just stop it yeah. I mean I just I just stop it and it really is that easy I mean it's just that's a habit you, yeah. yeah that's how you re- lay down new neural patterns yes, absolutely that's how you regulate your nervous system is to catch those little moments of I suck in whatever form right. and go nope well, that's one of the things that we mentioned. It's like the the nervous system. Cause I mean, why, why is it that people struggle so much with making changes in their lives? It's because mm-hmm. they're constantly tense because they're reacting out here. They're getting all their information from out here and not mm-hmm. getting the validation that they could from within. And mm-hmm. because they're tight and tense out here, they're in their sympathetic nervous system oftentimes. And, yeah. and that's why there's so many cases of inflammation, so many autoimmune disorders, so many things happening in amongst people with their health is just declining. And with no reason, fibromyalgia is one of the prime suspects. There's no cause for that. It's like the mystery illnesses that are now revealing themselves on our planet because they're things we have not dealt with and they're showing up in the body. Exactly. I want to touch on one more thing as we wrap up, because <laughs> you and I were talking, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, you're like, yep, you got to get the body. Cause I know you're a certified hypnotherapist and you've worked a lot with getting people into different states of consciousness and things. And you're like, okay, yep. So you have to get the body out of the way to access the still small voice. And I'm like, wait, 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 stop. Cause when you said still small voice, I went into my old trigger. That phrase was thrown around to me from this time. I was literally a toddler that you can't how, that is a, just a gift reserved for people who basically are doing it right. They're working the program that you don't get that. Well, let's call it the gift of the Holy Ghost. Like you can't, like everyone has the light of Christ. This is what I was taught. Everyone has the light of Christ. Everyone knows right from wrong. That's just an inherent birthright we have. But if you're really trying to be righteous and you're really trying to be holy and you're really trying to earn your salvation, let's just say. Mm which in and of itself is heinous, but, but you can't have that still small voice as your constant companion, unless number one, you get baptized and receive it the right way, Mm. which is through the male Mormon priesthood, but that's another story. They are the only ones who have the authority and the keys. (laughs) A, B, once you get that gift at age eight, by the laying on of hands, the gift of the Holy Ghost, that that gift can, I guess, be like kind of revoked or put on suspension or curtailed 
if you're not living worthily mm -hmm. to have it. It's a gift you kind of like have to earn. It's not given to you anymore. So once you hit this certain age of accountability and you, you know, get baptized and you get this gift of the Holy Ghost, that it can go away. It's it conditional. Mm -hmm. Very conditional, even though it's a gift. So there goes the mind warp a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's just not true. But that, that phrase <laughs> still small voice. It's like, am I hearing it now? Like my whole life, like, was that the still small voice or was that just me? Mm. Oh no, no. Like I was, I'm not worthy. Cause I like fought with my sister. So it's probably not the still small voice. Do you see that? Yeah, like, for sure. It's like, how do I, how would I know? I know now what that is for me, yeah. but I had to literally emancipate myself from all of that dogma. Yeah. Like you're saying where you're at this place in your life and, and that that's what I had to do is that that still small voice is always that pipeline is always there. Yes. It's just that I can't always hear it. Yeah. It has nothing to do with whether or not I sin or, you know, whatever, like I could be a serial killer on heroin. <laughs> it's just like a horrible, whatever, <laughs> but I could be doing heinous things on this planet. Okay. And that still small voice is still always going to be there. Well, and the thing is too, that I've learned, and I think it's one of the lessons in this book and it's taught, I think three or four times. It's one of the only lessons that is taught more than once. And it is basically, I am as God created me. I remain as I was created. I can never change from how I, I'm always the same. I'm always perfect, sinless, unconditionally loved, light, holy holy, mm. always, no matter what, I am always that. And that part of me that is connected to the divine is always peaceful, calm, blissful, happy, mm. unchanging. I mean, that's the peace that I know I can access, that I know you and all of us can access. That's always there. And that is who we truly are. It's that recognition and that remembering of who we really are. We are not this body or the things of this world. Even we are even not of this world. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's right. just pulling up to like the 30,000 foot view. It's like, that is who we really are. And until we get our head around that, we're going to stay in the minutia of the struggle of this life. I'm not saying that I don't have struggles, that I don't still have life. Right. But it's like, mm -hmm. I see it through a completely different lens of, oh, this isn't even real. It's like, and I'm feeling this way because I'm thinking this way and I can change it all by remembering these five truths. I mean, I swear yeah. it's like, it is just like, boom, brings you right back or brings me right back to what I know. Yeah. And it's like a knowing in my body, which is so full circle. Right. I mean, it's just like, Wow. How cool yeah. is that? And there are so many people awakening to what we're talking about. Yes. I mean, maybe they can't articulate it yet, but there's a felt sense of, oh, maybe my worthiness is actually intact. Inherent. Maybe who <laughs> I am. How, yeah. It has nothing to do with what I do. Yes. Or what I've done. I just, what I've done, no matter where you are, what you've been, but where you've been, what you've done. What I do know that. though, is that once you reach an awakening point or a point where you remember, it changes how you are. It changes what, how you're being in life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just are more because you're more of these things to yourself. You're more forgiving of yourself. You're more loving and accepting of yourself. You're more compassionate and patient with yourself. It just follows that you are that then to your brothers and sisters, because we're all connected. We're all one anyways. Yeah. I think that is the deeper truth that is actually being pointed to in the Gnostic texts. Gospel of Mary is one of which I referenced before is that you when you are cleansed, when your inner vessel is aligned and you, you just like, you don't have the desire to hurt no. yourself or anyone else. And so how could you sin quote unquote, how could you miss the mark? If you are love, if you're letting that love come through and you are embodied in it, yes. then you're not even going to that place in your consciousness of harming or doing things wrong or what, like you just have this pure heart and intention. Yeah. And I'm going to just say, this is the last thing I'm going to say that really, I mean, just the way that I look at things now, it's like, because I believe that I'm always held and protected. It's like, I don't get caught up in like what's going on in the world. 
like yeah. who the politics, the economy. So much illusion. And the thing is, is that I believe that none of that matters to me. It doesn't affect me. And because I believe that it doesn't, yeah. I mean, and that is something that people get really up on their hind legs about, but it's like, if, you know, like if you're not, a, if, if you're not aware of something, it can't affect you. Yeah. Right. And I mean, I'm not saying ignorance or putting your head in the sand, but it's like, if I believe yeah. that I am safe in the dark, right. Go back to what we were talking about. Then I am. If I believe that I'm healthy, I am healthy. You know, right. That's, you know, the power of belief, the power of our mind. It's like, we are all creators and it's like placebo effect. Yep. Hello. That's a belief. Yep. Yeah, it's just, yep. we could talk forever. I could talk to you yeah, forever. Yeah, I know. And I just, this is such juicy stuff. It really is. Okay, Julie, I know that you're going to come live into our Soul Rose community group on Facebook. So those of you who haven't asked to join that, please do. So you can come experience more. Actually, we'll, you'll be able to get the recording of Julie uh, taking someone through the process that she took me through, which was really powerful to access. And I still go to it. I have this oasis in my mind now that you helped me create. And it's where I go to, to feel that safety and that support. But where can people find you outside of coming to into our Facebook community uh, to witness your thing on Monday, the 11th, where can people find you online? They can find me at my website at it's about time, baby.com. That's my business name. And I also have a Facebook group too. There's a link on there. They can join my Facebook group through that as well. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. This has been awesome. Hey, it's Cherie here. Have you gotten my free whole body healing kit mini course? All you have to do is ask to join our private Facebook group, Soul Rose Community, and we'll send it right to your inbox. And I want you to know that I am so grateful for every single one of you who listens to these episodes. You can follow me on Instagram at Cherie.Burton to deepen into the discussion that you heard today. And I would be ever so grateful if you would leave this podcast a positive review on Apple Podcasts. This allows many more people to find these kinds of healing and empowerment gems that we bring forward in our discussions. And if you want to see our faces, check out my Soul Rose Show YouTube channel. Have a glorious week and we'll talk to you next time on the Soul Rose Show.